European Pastors Council 2024 unites over 1,000 leaders in Serbia to revitalize their passion for ministry. Advent Health Nurse saves cyclist life during bike ride in the U.S. Elderly community in southern Ecuador is transformed with health care and salvation message. Convention in Panama empowers Adventist professionals to serve. Adventist University of Chile innovates with pioneering project in agriculture and solar energy. Crime boss in Colombia surprises by protecting Adventist school. These and other news now on ANN. Stay tuned. While biking with his wife in Colorado and the United States, Jim suddenly went into cardiac arrest. Fortunately, Advent Health Porter nurse Nick Johnson was nearby and quickly stepped in, saving Jim's life. Watch the emotional reunion as they meet again in the hospital. There he is. Oh, no, there he is. It's finally nice to meet you. You too. You too. You look a little different. I bet I do. You I bet I do. I was on a bike ride from the reservoir. I just rounded the corner and he's on his back and hopped off my bike right away and jumped on the chest as we say at work. But, um, and then just didn't stop. Paramedics would get there eventually, so just to keep the strength up to go until they got there. One of the things you also did that I think you need to know, <laughs> When you said what you did and the way you said it, like, I am in control, I know what I'm doing. I was just like, I could just fall by his head and give that to you. And that meant the world, because that, that's your world, that's not my world. And that meant a lot. It's almost over here, I get to go home today, so. You are going home today? <laughs> yes. Today. Amazing. Oh, I didn't realize it was uh, today. And it will be <laughs> less than 100 hours after a full cardiac arrest. What do you think of that one? <laughs> See you on the trail. See, See yeah. you on the trail. What an exciting encounter. Let us follow Jesus' example by being his hands and feet to those we may meet along the way. Hundreds of Adventist professionals from across Inter-America gathered in Panama answering the call to be empowered to serve. Through inspiring messages and impactful projects, they reaffirmed their commitment to sharing the Word of God in their workplaces and communities, while advancing efforts to bring hope and positive change through faith. More than 300 Adventist business owners and professionals from across the Inter-American Division of the Seventh-day Adventists gathered in Panama for the ASI Convention, inspired to continue sharing the gospel in their workplaces and communities. Themed Empowered to Serve, the convention featured seminars, devotionals, and ministry reports. During the event, over 60 young people participated in evangelistic efforts, resulting in 132 baptisms. The ASI leaders highlighted their ongoing work to strengthen partnerships with church leaders and expand chapters across the region. Special offerings were collected to support Haiti and healthcare projects in Barbados while a new partnership with Adventist Healthcare Service aims to boost health centers. Attendees were reminded of the importance of staying connected to Christ to ensure ongoing success in their mission efforts. ASI, or Adventist Layman Services and Industries, is an organization of the Seventh-day Adventist professionals and business people dedicated to sharing the message of Christ through their careers and supporting the church's outreach efforts worldwide. The European Pastors' Council 2024 gathered over 1,200 leaders in Belgrade, Serbia to renew their passion for ministry in challenging times. Organized by the Adventist Church in the Trans-European region, the event addressed issues such as political polarization and declining church attendance. Under the theme, Not I, But God, pastors were encouraged to see difficulties as opportunities for God to act and replace their insecurities with confidence in the divine mission. Let's now watch some of the experiences and reflections from participants who left inspired, carrying forward a vision of an innovative and engaged church, centered on Jesus and guided by the Spirit. 
I think the greatest takeaway for me has been the worship and the songs and the way that they um, give it a wonderful picture of God and his love and the ups and downs of our life and that he's there all the time. The greatest takeaway for me after these five days is to see people have an expectation that God can surprise them and God can do even more than they ever had imagined before. My greatest takeaway I think it's actually the fellowship and the friendship, actually getting to meet people I haven't seen for years and making a lot of new friends. The opportunity to meet with friends and make new friends. Inspiring messages, food. Sp uh, spiritual input. Fellowship and taking part in the uh, Mass EPC Choir. The team, team spirit, team spirit. Inspirational and thought-provoking messages. The praise and worship to be inspired to share Jesus with our community and to know that we're not in this alone. We have a powerful community behind us. And most importantly, we have the joy of serving God with His Holy Spirit leading us. Community and team spirit. And learn more how we can help each other and how we can share the message of the gospel. Pastors are going home inspired, motivated to serve. And this will uh, bring energy to the ministry not just for a week, but hopefully for years to come. It's the togetherness that we are all here again. It's wonderful. Overall, it was a success. May these insights continue to inspire and motivate every pastor's service in their communities. Global mission pioneers from across the Southern Asia Pacific region gathered at the inaugural convention in Bali, Indonesia to discuss mission objectives and challenges. Delegates exchanged strategies and shared experiences to empower and inspire each other during the event. The first ever Global Mission Pioneers Convention in the Southern Asia Pacific region was held at the Plagu Holiday Hotel in Bali, Indonesia. With the theme, I will go to see him the event underscored the commitment of more than 130 pioneers who have been instrumental in spreading the gospel in some of the most challenging areas of the world. Church leaders in the territory welcomed all delegates and celebrated the mission stories shared. The event served as a time for spiritual renewal, strategic planning, and encouragement from Adventist mission leaders. Several speakers addressed the delegates offering encouragement and valuable guidance as they continued their mission. The success of this convention sets the stage for future gatherings, encouraging even more people to join the global mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Global mission pioneers are lay people and pastors who dedicate at least one year to establishing congregations in unentered areas within their own cultures. Since 1990, they have established over 11,000 new Seventh-day Adventist congregations, spreading hope and salvation to people of all nations, tribes, languages, and cultures. This is the heart of mission. Tyson, a 21-year-old from Brisbane, Australia, shares his story. He struggled with alcohol and personal turmoil. Through reconnecting with work, he found clarity and a renewed sense of purpose. Watch now to discover his inspiring journey. Yeah, I, I got worse as time went by, causing more problems for myself because I couldn't handle the problems I already had. I think what really led me down the path of alcoholism and the drugs was you know, I grew up in a household that was pro-alcohol. My name's Tyson, I'm 21 and I'm from Brisbane. So going back a few years ago, I had a full-time job and I just started to lose myself in the money, the alcohol, the drinking, and I would just cause problems that weren't there with my girlfriend at the time. And the breakup really got to me. I, I lost touch with who I was and who I wanted to be. And when Centrelink referred me to work for the doll with Adra, I was, I was really scared. I didn't think I had it in me to be able to get it done, get there every day and be able to work a full day without, you know, the substances that I'm used to taking. And surprisingly, it really helped me. It helped me get out of the house and socialize. It gave me more energy, it made me feel cleaner and clearer. And I felt much less need to be taking 
such a high amount of substances to get me through the day, I was just, I felt overall better. I didn't need to. It is just great to meet people like uh, Tyson. Interaction with him already shows that there's been a major change in his attitude. He's a person that uh, wants to do something positive with his life. I don't want to see anyone out there thinking there's no help. There's help for everyone. I'm looking forward to the future with a job, a car, a license and a family. I just, I want to feel like I'm living a normal life again. Working for Adra, it's definitely impacted my mental health for the better, 100%. I'm a new person almost. Tyson's story shows that with God's help, even when life gets tough, you can turn things around. Stay focused, find your purpose, and remember, change is always possible. This week on ANN Profiles, Alyssa Truman interviews Hensley Maruvin, Undersecretary of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, about his life journey and ministry. From his childhood in Mauritius to his current leadership role, Hensley shares how faith, humility, and dedication to mission have shaped his life and career. The driver, you know, we, we believe the driver knows where we are going. In my metaphor, he's the president. The treasurer, because he has money, we call him the fueler. He is responsible for petrol, for gas. Now, you can have the best driver, you can have a car full with gas, but if your car is not in a running condition, you are not going anywhere. That is true. The secretary is the mechanical engineer. He ensures that the engine of the car is running. So mm. if... If the secretary is the mechanical engineer, the undersecretary is the mechanic. So you're a mechanic. For the Lord, of course. Amen. <laughs> so we ensure that the whole mechanism of the church, the whole engine of the church is running. And all that, the driver, the president, and the fueler, the secretary, this whole vehicle is here for missional purposes, Right so that this vehicle can move from point A to point B in order to accomplish the mission. So the undersecretary deals with all the mechanism of all the systems and processes and protocols and committees and policies of the church. So in a nutshell, that's what an undersecretary does. You keep the church moving forward in mission. For mission, always. In mission. For I mission. said mission at the end. Yes. For the full episode and other videos delving deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist faith and its story, visit our official channel on YouTube. In Ecuador, the Adventist Church offers more than just health services. It brings hope to the entire community. Let's go to Vicabamba, where a transformative action made a difference in the lives of dozens of people. The Adventist Community Center of Vilcabamba organized a free health program in southern Ecuador. The initiative provided medical care, visual assessment, reading glasses distribution, vegetarian food, and a stand for child sexual violence prevention. Of the 80 participants, 41 accepted Bible studies in their homes, thanks to the intentional evangelism of local church members. They distributed the book, The Great Controversy, while sharing the message of the gospel at the health fair. The event was supported by volunteers and the community who are already planning new actions, including healthy cooking and baking courses. Vilcabamba is known for the exceptional longevity of its residents, who often live beyond 100 years, thanks to a healthy lifestyle, natural diet, and clean environment. More than physical care, it's spiritual care that makes a difference. The Adventist mission continues to inspire and transform lives for good around the world. For now, we will explore the world of filmmaking with the cinematographer and manager at Advent Health. Discover how passion for creating beautiful images and innovative camera rigs fuels their work. Well, hello, Pathfinders. Meet my friend, Liam. Liam 
Adam is 13 years old and, like many of you, is interested in becoming a filmmaker. Speaking of which, Liam, I think I'm ready for my close-up now. All right, Jashan. So if I had my camera, I would zoom in like this, add some special effects, some dramatic music, and scene. Well, we're in luck because tonight we're meeting someone who loves to bring the drama just like you. In fact, he uses his skills and talents to share incredible stories of health and healing to thousands of people. Wait, wait, wait. This is someone who works in healthcare and is a filmmaker? Yep. So let's go meet my friend Brian. All right, sounds good. Well, my first question for you is, what do you do here as a filmmaker? As a filmmaker here at Avon Health, I do a lot of different things. I am a cinematographer and I am a manager. As a cinematographer, I will be in charge of making sure that we get the shots that we want to get and the look that we want to get, making sure the shot is beautiful. And I'm also our colorist, so that means that after the project has been completed, I will take it and color it in a specific way that we had envisioned from the beginning. Well, why did you become a filmmaker? I just love working with my hands so much that I, I would look for ways to, to utilize that. And so I took a few classes in uh, media production, and I loved it. I, I fell in love with the craft. And as the years went by, I realized that I loved filmmaking. I loved cinematography. I loved making beautiful images. I found that I, I loved building rigs. Productions call for different ways of setting up your camera. So I would set up the camera with having all these monitors. I wanted to slim it down. I, I just found that working and building these camera rigs was a lot of fun for me. Well, Brian, my last question for you is, what inspired you to work here at Advent Health? I love filmmaking. I love travel. I love helping others. And I love doing it for a, a greater purpose. As a filmmaker, you can go so many different ways. You can make yourself an amazing cinematographer, director, all for your glory. But I wanted to do it for, for God's glory. So I chose to work for Avon Health because I, I really love the mission that they have here, They're extending the healing ministry of Christ. You know, they checked off all these boxes for me. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We truly have learned so much from you. How about you? Yeah, I've definitely learned a lot. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, do you guys want to go look around Studio 7, see what we do here? Yes, yeah. please. All right, let's go. Welcome to our control room, guys. This is where all the magic happens behind the scenes. This is allowing us to film somebody in this location without getting all the extra sounds. We can place you anywhere in the world at the click of a button. Where are we now? I think we're in the hospital. Hey, look, hand sanitizer. Now that's something essential you gotta have in a hospital. Of course, you've gotta get those 99.9% .9 germs out of the way. For sure. Get us out of here, Brian! Brian! Get us out of here, please! Brian! My heart! Well, guys, welcome to our editing bay. This is Kelly. She's one of our editors. And basically, she's in charge of putting all of our stories together. So when, after we've shot all the, the footage, she comes in here and she puts together all of the cool stories that we produce. So how long does it take to do an edit for a project like this? Depends on the project. Some of these edits take from a couple days to a couple weeks. And in the end, we have a wonderful story to tell and hopefully it will inspire many others. Thanks, Kelly. We learned a lot. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your time today. And I can speak for the both of us when I say we truly appreciate all that you've taught us. I'm glad you guys stopped by. This video series featured at the International Camp Re in Gillette highlights diverse careers in health for Pathfinders. Let these stories spark your imagination and inspire your future path. Adventist University of Chile recently developed an innovative project focused on sustainable agriculture and energy. The Adventist University of Chile is pioneering a groundbreaking agro-photovoltaic project that combines agriculture and sustainable energy. This unique initiative features transparent solar panels that generate electricity and protect fruit crops like cherries and strawberries from extreme weather, while also reducing microplastic contamination. Funded by the Regional Innovation Fund of Newble, the project enhances production efficiency and sustainability. It offers dual benefits, 
improved crop quality, and significant energy cost savings. This innovative approach sets a new standard in integrating solar energy with agricultural practices. This project not only advances technology, but also demonstrates a commitment to finding practical solutions that benefit people and the environment. Congratulations on this great achievement. Keep up the fantastic work. Now let's go to Puerto Tejada, Colombia, where a former gang boss, influenced by his childhood memories at an Adventist school, made an unexpected decision. Discover how he used his criminal world influence to protect and revitalize the school that shaped his youth, preserving its legacy and creating new opportunities for future generations. Is it good to have gangs living around a school? Not usually, but in Puerto Tejada, Colombia, some good has come from it. The Adventist school in Puerto Tejada has been educating children in their community for almost 70 years. Over time, many dangerous gangs have come into the city. Today, there are approximately 70 gangs here in the municipality. The Adventist school has attracted parents to enroll their children because of the Christian values they teach. The parents hope it will keep their kids away from these dangerous lifestyles. This institution is a refuge. This is a refuge because, unfortunately, in our municipality, we face a wave of violence from the children who have been involved in gangs. And many parents are looking for a way to find shelter in those institutions that can help their children grow up in a healthy environment, with a better perspective and a better vision in terms of being better citizens. Even though the school provides an excellent Christian environment, some students still join gangs. One student from here at the institution fell into the world of gangs, drug addiction, robbery, and he became one of the bravest gunmen that that municipality had seen. Even though this former student had become a powerful gang boss, he still had a soft spot for the Adventist school of his childhood. One morning, the chaplain entered the school to find that many computers and valuable items had been stolen. He knew members of the gang were responsible. He decided to ask his gang boss friend for help. He immediately told me that he was going to find out who had stolen those items. After 30 minutes, he calls me and tells me, I know who stole it and where it is. Everyone was shaking because he was the boss. They brought everything that had been lost. They brought the video, the computers, the fans, and immediately delivered them. Since that day, the Adventist school has grown bigger and bigger. They have outgrown their current classrooms and have begun to build new ones. We currently have a construction project here in this institution that is to raise three or four or five floors in the preschool area. This is the new project that we have here at the Educational Corporation. We want to develop a space in which a better service can be provided. We want the opportunity to provide a space for our teachers. Since we lack a meeting room specifically to have our meetings in the old location, there will also be a space in which we will have room for recreation for the students. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will go to help finish the construction of these new classrooms and offices. Please pray for the education work in Puerto Tejada. Even though it is dangerous, students' lives are being transformed by this school. Thank you for your support of mission around the world. The gang boss's actions reaffirmed the impact of Adventist education, even in surprising circumstances. I hope you enjoyed this multicultural experience of news from the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. Present in over 200 countries, the denomination seeks to be the hands and feet of Christ through its members, leaders, administrative headquarters, institutions, and support ministries. You can access other good news by joining the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and also on the ANN website, Adventist.News. Share your faith journey and submit prayer requests on our channels. Our team is committed to praying for you 24-7. Before I say goodbye, I leave you with the inspiring words from the book of Psalms, chapter 73, 
verse 26. The text says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Study the Bible daily to discover other wonderful promises of hope. God willing, we will meet in the next edition of a and God bless you. Take care.